a little short video and this is also about macromolecules and the macromolecules we're going to deal with here are nucleic acid. Nucleic acid I think of as information storage, you know, like your DNA and your RNA are the most common. Now the functions of a nucleic acid of course is to store genetic information, your genes, and we remember from biology we actually changed the DNA which is found in our nucleus to an RNA which is later translated into the different proteins that we have. Um, is simply a transfer of information from cell to cell. Now, the best two examples that you need to know are DNA and RNA. Please know some differences. Um, RNA is only single-stranded, so that would be like this one over here. DNA is double-stranded. That would be that double helix structure that Watson and Crick discovered um, that looks like this. We know there's also other differences. RNA has uracil, where DNA has thymine. RNA has the sugar ribose, where DNA has the sugar deoxyribose. Now, we do need to know that the monomer of a nucleic acid is a nucleotide. And when we look at the different points of a nucleotide, the nucleotide has three different parts. And here they are down here. A nucleotide has a nitrogen base, which can be either A, T, C, G, or U, depending on if it's RNA or DNA. It has a pentose sugar, which remember is a five carbon sugar, one, two, three, four, five. It's a pentose sugar. Um, it could be the glucose or, I mean, excuse me, it could be the ribose or deoxyribose. And here they are up here, depending on which one it is. And it has a phosphate group. And this is the classic structure of a nucleotide. Now, there are basically two types of nucleotide, and this is new information to you. The two types of nucleotides are either purines or pyrimidines. Now, the purines are the A and the G, are both purines, and they are a double ring. Here's a ring, and here's a ring, here's a ring, and here's a ring. So guanine has two rings, and adenine has two rings, makes them purine. Now, the little penguin up here, Think of purine as AG, and if you remember from chemistry, AG is a symbol for silver. So pure silver is AG. A purine would be A and G. So that's just a little way of remembering how to do it. Uh, pyrimidines are only single rings. So if you look at these, it has only one ring, like the cytosine here, the thymine, or the uracil. And if you remember from biology, regular biology, we had a little rule, right, complementary base rule. A's always went with T's and R and DNA or U's and RNA, and C's always went with G's. So you got a purine going with a pyrimidine or a purine with a pyrimidine. So, all right. Now, the backbone is something you need to remember is that it's called, it has a phosphodiester bond. That means that's the place where new ones are, are added to it. And I have those kind of circled over here. If you look, here's your phosphate group, here's your sugar, here's your purine, and then it has a little dangler hanging off. This dangler is where, between here and here, where these will be attached. And they attach to each other. Because remember, a nucleic acid is actually a bunch of monomers of nucleotides put together. Okay? Um, Oh, here's what I was talking about a while ago, and I forgot I had it here. But nucleotides bond on DNAs, A's with T's and C's with G's, something we might not have known from regular biology. There's only two hydrogen bonds between A's and T's, three hydrogen bonds between G's and C's. And remember that there's a reason why we have hydrogen bonds. Hydrogen bonds are, are easily broken. So that makes it where we can unravel our DNA molecule pretty easily and recopy it. Okay? I hope this helps, and I will talk to you later.